Hello and welcome. So European Medicines Agency or EMA has uh, recently updated its Q&A documents related to the nitrosamine. And this updation has happened on 7th, 7th July 2023. So in this particular Q&A document, the question number 10 is updated, which is related to the limits apply for nitrosamines in medicinal products. Now, what is the exact update? Now, there are two different approaches given by the EMA to establish the acceptable intake for any nitrosamine. The first one is very straightforward. You can conduct the carcinogenicity study, generate the carcinogenic data, understand the TD50, and based on the TD50, you can extrapolate a concentration which result a tumor in one species out of one lakh studied species until the lifespan and that concentration can be called as an acceptable intake. But in case if you do not have this carcinogenic database, in that situation, the point number one can be used that is the carcinogenic potency categorization approach or CPCA. Now this uh, particular approach is uh, not very new to the industry and even to the regulators. The same approach has been used by the regulators to define the uh, acceptable intake of the carcinogenic compound or nitrosamines, which is called as the SAR or uh, Structure Activity Relationship Approach or Read Across Approach. You will find the mentioning of such approach into the EMAS nitrosamines guideline. So in this particular discussion, we will try to understand how this CPCA or carcinogenic potency categorization approach can be used to define the acceptable intake. In this particular video, we will talk about the five different categories of the nitrosamine compound and uh, how to define these different categories for a given nitrosamine compound. We will also talk about some of the interesting examples how one can these categories be applied for actually setting the acceptable intake for nitrosamine. So please let me bring the presentation on the board now. So this particular questions and answer documents published by EMA has uh, given the, the different potency categories. And before we go to the potency categories, we have to first understand in which category this particular nitrosamine compounds fall. So there is a important uh, diagram you can see on the screen now. So what is the first question you need to ask? Does your nitrosamine have any hydrogen on its alpha carbon? I think uh, the, you know the definition of alpha carbon. So the carbon which is just adjacent to the nitrogen is called as the alpha carbon that night the carbon is called as the alpha carbon so does there is a hydrogen present on the alpha carbon see if you remember in my last video i talked about which functional groups compounds or atoms influence the carcinogenic potency of the nitrosamine and in the first statement there is a very first point which talks about the presence of hydrogen on alpha carbon increases the carcinogenic potency of the nitrosamine. So let us first understand whether there is a hydrogen present onto the alpha carbon. So in case if there is no hydrogen present onto the alpha carbon, and you can see a example over here that, as I said earlier, that the carbon which is adjacent to the nitrogen is called as the alpha carbon. So is there a hydrogen present onto the alpha carbon in the given example? there is absence of alpha hydrogen. Uh, uh, there is absence of hydrogen on alpha carbon. In that case, your compound actually falls under the potency category 5. And what is the limit for cat potency category 5 nitrosamine? It is the 1500 nanograms per day or 1.5 microgram per day. Now, what is this particular figure coming from? Now, you can relate to the TTC defined into the ICH-M7R1 guideline threshold of toxicological concern. So in case if you want to avail this particular TTC approach, that limit is 1.5 micrograms per day. 
this is called as a highly conservative approach and in case if you want to understand this particular approach you can go through the ICH M7 R1 guideline but in case if your compound has a hydrogen present onto alpha carbon you can see in the given structure that this is the alpha carbon and each alpha carbon has a three hydrogen atoms present so in case if there is a hydrogen present onto the alpha carbon the next question you have to ask does nitrosamine have more than one alpha hydrogen on one or both the sides of the nitroso n group nitrogen connected to the nitroso group so you can easily understand there are more than one hydrogen on both the alpha carbons so what happens if you say that oh no there is no more than one hydrogen present onto alpha carbon i mean there is only one hydrogen present onto each of the alpha carbon you can see in the diagram over here in that case again the potency category is given to the five and if the compound is categorized as the five then the acceptable intake is again 1500 nanograms per day or 1.5 micrograms per day provided there is only one hydrogen present onto both of your alpha carbon but there could be second situation where there are more than uh, one alpha there are more than one hydrogen present onto your uh, alpha carbon in that case we have to actually calculate this category and we'll talk about those in the coming uh, points but for this particular situation the question is does your nitrosamine have a tertiary alpha carbon and here is the diagram talks about the tertiary alpha carbon the tertiary alpha carbon is nothing but a carbon connected to three different carbon atoms so this is the alpha carbon and this alpha carbon is connected to the three carbon atoms so it is called as a tertiary carbon now so in case if it is a tertiary carbon then again the potency or the the category of this particular compound is going to be five and hence the acceptable intake of 1500 nanograms per day can be considered but in case if this tertiary carbon is not available i mean your alpha carbon is not a tertiary carbon in that case you have to calculate the potency score we will talk about the calculation of the potency score very soon but what is the score now is the score equal to or greater than 4 could be 5 6 7 8 9 or 10 but it should be at least 4 or greater than 4 if the answer is yes then again the category of the compound is a 4 now 4 or greater than 4 is classified under category 4 and the acceptable intake for such a compound is now 1500 nanograms per day or 1.5 micrograms per day but in case if your potency score is not more than or equal to 4 then how much it is is it 3 if it is 3 then the acceptable intake is going to be 400 nanograms per day or is it greater is is it less than 3 how much it is is it 2 if it is 2 then it is 100 nanograms per day is going to be the acceptable intake and if it is 1 then uh, it is going to be 18 nanograms per day so these are the five different categories and their respective limits i hope this flowchart must have cleared your understanding about the categories and related to their acceptable intake